Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us for December 2020's Stampin' Class by Mail. I'm Gina Wieselman of MySweetPaper.com and I can't wait for you to make this month's card designs using the Quite Curvy Bundle by Stampin' Up. I've teamed up with Brenda Cardinal, another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, to offer these monthly classes by mail. This month, Brenda designed the three cards, so she'll show you how to stamp and assemble them. Next month, it's my turn. Make sure to watch to the end of this video for a sneak peek of my three card designs and some bonus opportunities for signing up. I hope you have a great time putting your cards together, and here's Brenda. Thanks, Gina. Hi, everyone. I'm Brenda Cardinal of stampintulip.stampinup.net, and I'm excited to show you how to stamp and assemble your three card designs featuring the Quite Curvy Bundle by Stampin' Up. This bundle of products is part of the Curvy Celebrations promotion going on through January 4th, 2021. You'll also find this bundle in the upcoming January to June 2021 mini catalog. From the Quite Curvy Bundle, we'll be using the Quite Curvy Stamp Set and the Curvy Dies. We've paired this bundle with elements from the Playing With Pattern Suite found in Stampin' Up's 2020-2021 annual catalog. From the suite, we'll be using the Designer Series Paper, ribbon combo pack, and resin dots. Also from the annual catalog, we'll be using the Label Me Lovely Punch, Layering Opals dies, and the Stitched Shapes dies. If you order a kit from either Gina or me, elements for your cards have been punched and pre-cut for you. Before we get started, you'll want to get your supplies ready, including the Knight of Navy and Tuxedo Black Memento ink pads, mini glue dots, Stampin' Dimensionals, stamp and seal, a bone folder, an assortment of clear blocks, paper snips, and stamp apparatus. Please reach out to Dina or I if you need any supplies, would like to chat about becoming a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, or hosting a Stampin' Up! event. Let's get started with our first card design. Our first card design is the Your One in a Million card. If you ordered a Stampin' Class by Mail kit from either Gina or me, all your parts and pieces including those that have been punched and die cut or shipped directly to your home. If not, here are the things you'll need to complete the cards as designed. Pause the video here to prep everything and then come back when you are ready. We're going to start out by doing our stamping and we're going to stamp the vine here. Now this has been die cut for you and I have to show you this paper. So one side of a lot of the papers in this playing with patterns package has a kind of a fun pattern on it and the other side has kind of a wash and so what we did is we cut a strip of the designer series paper and then die cut the image and then we'll stamp on it so it gives you the nice illusion of um, depth with a differentiation of color there now like i said this has been die cut for you and because the stamp set quite curvy is a photopolymer, we could ink up our stamp and stamp right down on there. And we'd get pretty close. But if we'd like perfect placement, we could use our Stamparatus. Now Stamparatus is a tool to help with uh, placing your image perfectly. Our setup today, because we're using a photopolymer stamp set, is we have our Stamparatus, one plate, our foam pad. Now this takes the place of on our cling stamps that has the rubber and the foam. So this is our foam. And then I'm going to put a piece of the grid paper on there as well. So what we'll do is we'll pull the stamp off and I'm just going to lay it anywhere on my grid paper there. And I'm going to close my stamp case and I'm going to pick up the stamp. Okay, and make sure everything is tucked up into this corner. Okay, so then we're going to ink our stamp. Our ink color is Knight of Navy. And to make inking a little easier, I'm going to place our stamp case underneath here so it levels out this plate. And then I'm going to ink up the stamp. And I'll stamp it down. We go and making sure this is still tucked up in the corner with your kit we provided a piece of uh, whisper white paper that has been die cut for you and what we'll do is we'll place this around our stamped image put our magnet on there to keep it in place 
and then we'll load in our die cut designer series paper image. Okay, then we'll re ink our stamp and we'll stamp that down. And there we go, perfect placement. So then we'll stamp our image on the inside if we'd like. So I put my image back on my block. Make sure I get that nice and inked up. And place that towards the top. Just below the folded line and towards the top of our Whisper White card base. There we go. And if you would like, you can go ahead and stamp your envelope as well. Okay, we're going to set aside our Knight of Navy's ink pad. We're going to come back to that in a little bit here. So let's start assembling our card. We're going to start by assembling this portion of it. We're going to be using our stamp and seal. I love that Stampin' Up! put this in a little pouch for me so I can keep it. I always tuck my cap back in the pouch so I don't lose it. All right, let's start by adding our purple posy piece to the top of our Knight of Navy cardstock. And you can decide if you'd like your scallops to go that way or this way. And we're gonna line it up so it has equal borders on the left, right, and top side. Then we'll take our stripe piece and we'll attach this. And so we have equal borders on the left and right and bottom. So we want, we're looking for the same uh, border all the way around. All right, there we go. And now we'll take our thick Whisper White card base We'll fold it in half. Using our bone folder, we'll get a nice crease on that. And then we'll add this to the front of our card. Again, with equal borders all the way around. Then we'll add our stamped leaf vine using Stampin' Dimensionals. And we're going to, so we're going to tuck our ribbon underneath on the lower edge. So when we place our dimensionals, we want to place it towards the top edge here. So I'll use four, okay. I'm peeling off those release papers. We'll place this so that we cover up that seam that we created with those two pieces of designer series paper. I think I, I want to make sure that I have the same overhang on the left and right side. So it goes off a little bit off the designer series paper. There we go. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to bring back in our Knight of Navy pad. And I and the you're, You Are One in a Million stamp. I'm going to open this back up and make sure it lays nice and flat. Make sure this is nice and inky. Greeting is all, yep, looks good. And then we're gonna place it so that it follows the curve of our leaf vine. There we go. All right, and then all we have left is to add our ribbon. We'll do that using mini glue dots. 
And we'll start out by taking our ribbon and we'll add a glue dot to the center. And then we'll fold them to create a V. All right, once we have them all done, then we'll come back in with our glue dots again, pick one up, and then we'll tuck it under our leaf vine here. So I'm gonna start in the middle, and that one's going to go kind of straight down. And then I'm going to put one towards the right side here, kind of angled. Again, kind of following that curve a little bit. Then I'll we'll put one over on the left side. You kind of get the same angle on both sides. And there we go. Our next card is the Kirby Birds card. Here are the parts and pieces you'll need for this card. We're going to start by doing our stamping and we'll be using the Tuxedo Black Memento. We'll start by stamping our label. And we use the Label Me Lovely Punch to make that label. We want to orient the label the correct way. So we have the straight edges on the left and right side. So we're going to, we're going to stamp this about a quarter inch from the right side. And then if you imagine a horizontal line going through the center of the label, that's we're going to stamp it just below that. Okay, and then we want to stamp our inside greeting. When I'm working with a rubber stamp that's larger than my ink pad, I like to lay my block down with the rubber side up, then pick up my ink pad and walk it back and forth across my image. That way I make sure I don't miss a spot. Then I'll stamp that down. And we'll set that aside. And now we want to stamp all of our little birds. I have to show you this paper. So this is kind of the fun pattern side. And here's kind of the color wash side. And that's what we use we, uh, to stamp our birds. Or to die cut our birds, I should say, before we stamp them. So again, if you ordered a kit for Gina or me, we have die cut the images on little pieces of Whisper White cardstock. And this is so that if you'd like to use your Stamparatus, you can use these to drop your bird images to get perfect placement. But let's see how I do today. I'm gonna see if I can just wing it. Not too bad. All right, and of course, I pulled out my Calypso Coral stamp pad, which is one of our colors in the designer series paper, and stamped a couple birds on my envelope. So feel free to do that as well if you'd like. And before we go too much further, I wanna just take a side note and show you how I die cut these curvy pieces. Bring in my Big Shot. We have a lovely new die cutting machine, if you don't already have one called the stamp and cut and emboss machine so to do this I actually um, layered my two pieces of designer series paper together by doing that when I cut them at the same time when I then take and flip the other one around the the curve line follows or mirrors each other I should say so I'll show you how that works in just a second so you lay this down and we want to make sure the cut, the, the, the part of the die that has that cut line is at the top and whatever curve you want. Oh, we're hopping around on the on my magnetic cutting plate now. So we're hopping around between magnets here. Because I've made a bunch of these cards, I actually created a template for myself so that I can lay this down. 
I might have to shift my paper a little bit. And then, okay, so lay the, the template down and then move my die to match. And I'll pull the template away. Add my top cutting plate. And run that through. And then when I picked it up, see, there we go. And then when you turn it around, see how they mirror each other? Another great tool for this particular die is our take your pick tool because it has one and has the paper piercer so I can come back and poke all those little pieces out. All right, so now we want to take and we want to fold our card base in half. And we'll use our bone folder to get a nice crease to that. We'll set that aside for a minute. And then we're going to start assembling. So again, we'll use our stamp and seal. And we're going to start with our designer series paper on this whisper white piece. And we'll put the Calypso Coral uh, polka dots down first. And we're going to center that. So we have about the same space at the top and bottom. Okay, then we'll add our polka dot, our large polka dots, to the top. And then we'll add our striped purple posy piece to the bottom. Let's check. And I have just a little bit hanging over the edge, so I'll bring in my paper snips. And I'll just trim off any excess here. All right. Then we'll attach this to the Clipsal Coral piece. Center that up, and we just have a little narrow border around that. And then we'll add this to our purple posy piece. And we'll place that in the center. Then we'll attach this hole assembly to the front of our card base. Then with our stamp and dimensionals, we'll come back in and add our label. And we're going to place that a little bit. So if you, again, if you have a horizontal line here that cuts the card in half, we're going to put that a little bit lower than the horizontal line. And then we're going to have, have it hang over the edge of our, our decorative uh, um, layer here. Then we will add our ribbon element. And I'd like my little tails to go the same direction, so I'm going to flip this one around. If it won't stay how you would like it, you can bring your glue dots back in and you can pick up a glue dot and put a glue dot on the top one, flip the bottom one, oops, attached to my thumb. Did you see that? Okay, put the glue dot on the top one. 
then flip the bottom one around and then put a little pressure on it and then it'll stay the direction you want. And then we'll add a glue dot to attach the ribbon to our label. Okay, next we'll bring in our birds and we'll attach those using glue dots as well. And then have one placed on the inside of our card too. All right. And our last element to add here is our resin dots. So we're going to grab three purple posy resin dots. And there we go. Our last card is the flowers just for you. Here are the parts and pieces you'll need for this card. We're going to start by doing our folding on our crushed curry card base. There's four score lines on this. There's one at three fourths one and two and a half, six and three fourths, and eight and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the score line at two and a half, we're going to fold that towards the center, put a nice crease on that, and then we're going to take the one that's at three fourths inch and fold that back towards the two and a half inch score line. Then we'll fold the card base at the six and three fourths inch score line towards the center, and then the one that's at eight and a half back towards a six and three fourths inch score line. Okay, so there's our card. Then we'll take our Whisper White Oval that's been cut with the stitched shapes dies and our Knight of Navy ink. And we'll stamp our greeting in the center. And we'll set that aside. So for our inside greeting, we're going to bring our card base back in and we're going to lay our Whisper White piece in this center section as if we're going to tape it down, but we're not going to yet because we don't like how we stamped our greeting. We can just flip it over. And our goal here is to make sure our greeting doesn't show when the card is closed. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to close this top section. Oops, I shifted this just a little bit. There we go. Close the top section and take a pencil and draw a light line across like that. And then we'll ink up our greeting and we'll stamp it above that pencil line. It doesn't have to be very far above, but above it. There we go. And then we'll just take an eraser and we'll erase that line. Next, we're going to stamp our flowers here. And I just wanted to bring in this piece of the designer series paper. It has kind of that ombre wash on it. And when we cut the designer series paper for you, we cut it so that you got a complete wash okay and then we did give you the framework if you want to use your stamp apparatus so i'm going to go ahead and wing it again and see if i can get that placed by just stamping it Nope, didn't do quite as well on that one, but that's okay. So let's start assembling our card. We'll again use stamp and seal, and we're gonna add our designer series paper to the outside. So let's take our stripes, and we're gonna add that to this 
section here. So this is the section that is at the two and a half inch score line. And we're just adhere it so that we have equal borders on left, right, and top. So we'll open that back up and then we'll add the second piece to the bottom section here. Again, we want equal borders on the left, right, and now bottom section here. Okay. And then we'll add our Knight of Navy polka dot designer series paper. So we'll close our card at the two and a half inch, fold back the three quarter inch section, and that's where this piece will go. And putting it down so we have equal borders all the way around. And then we'll close the six and three fourths inch section and fold back the eight and a half. And then we'll put our second piece of Knight of Navy polka dot designer series paper. Again, equal borders all the way around. And then we'll add our inside piece. Then we'll attach our stamped Whisper White Oval to our Knight of Navy oval. The Knight of Navy oval has been die cut with the layering ovals dies. And then use Stampin' Dimensionals. We're gonna attach our ovals. I think the best way to do this is pick up one dimensional and put it in the center of this little section here towards the cut edge. Pretty close to center. Then you want to take one Stampin' Dimensional and add it to the front about a half, well, about a three quarters of an inch to an inch to the left of the one that we just put down in the center and then towards the folded edge and then repeat that on the other side. Kind of what this does is it kind of mirrors the, the oval shape. Okay, then we'll pull our release papers off. and we'll close up our card, and then we'll attach our oval so it's centered. Now, we're only adding dimensionals to the top, otherwise we end up with a postcard rather than a card that opens. Okay, then with our glue dots, we'll add our flower boughs. Now I chose to put the flower bow with the darkest crushed curry um, part of the designer series paper at the top, and the one with the lighter one towards the bottom, whichever way you think looks best. And let's see. So now notice that the bow does hang off the edge just a little bit. So we want to put our glue dots towards this bottom curved edge. And I tried to place it so that I didn't have any of the white oval showing. So I use three glue dots in this as well. There we go. And then if you order a kit from us, we pre-tie the bows for you. So here's our little Knight of Navy bow. We'll use a glue dot to attach that as well. Then our last step is to add our resin dots. 
So we want to close the card and then I'm going to start with the largest one and I'm going to put that centered top and bottom and then I'm going to add the, the smaller one to the just to the right of that and I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. So again, the largest one centered the top and bottom, about the same distance from my oval. And then add the smaller one. So let's see, place. Okay, there you go. I forgot to mention, but if you'd like to stamp your envelope, you can do that as well. And now I'd like to show you some additional samples that I made using the Quite Curvy Stamp Set and Curvy Dies. This first one is a birthday card. And this is another one of the dies that come in the set. And then I use the balloon bouquet punch for my balloons. The polka dots here come from the second stamp set in this promotion, and I'll show you that in just a minute. This is kind of a fun card. Um, so I used the polka dot border to cut the decorative edge. And then this is another die that comes in there. So it die cuts these little leaves that you can see that I used here, but then it also um, does an embossed image of the vine. So that's really pretty. This next card was inspired by a picture that I saw in a catalog that I thought was really fun. And when I saw the stamp set and dies, I thought, you know what, I think I can kind of recreate that. So I used a couple extra things here. I used the background for this was using the dry brush background stamp. And then I did a bunch of sponging around the edges. And then um, I used my Stampin' Blends to color in all my birds. And here's a sympathy card I created. I didn't use the dies on this one. The stamps that I use for my greetings is Peaceful Moments. The ribbon here is from the uh, August to December 2020 mini catalog, and that's called All the Trimmings Ribbon Combo Pack. My colors here um, for coloring in my flowers are Poppy Parade and Granny Apple Greed, and I use my Stampin' Blends, so I got a little shading with that. As I mentioned, the Kirby Celebrations promotion had a second stamp set and a stack of six by six designer series papers. So let me show you that. Kirby Christmas is the stamp set. Super fun. And this is the little stamp that I used for my polka dots on my balloons. This is designed to work with the Kirby dies as well. So that's really fun. The paper, I have to show you the paper. It's, it's really nice. So you get a whole variety of different patterns. And the colors here are Cherry Cobbler, Sahara Sand, and Shaded Spruce. So here's one combination. And notice how this, well, let's back up. The stars coordinate with this stamp and the two little stars. The branches here coordinate it with these. Then we have kind of a holly-like image and polka dots. Love the trees, so much fun. And the last set, he's got him a check and some stripes. So really fun. So let me show you what I created using the Kirby Christmas stamp set and the classic Christmas designer series paper. Kind of a fun way to put the card together. Here I combined the stamp set with the dies. So I discovered that because this stamp set is a photopolymer stamp set, I could mount the trees on my clear block so that it matched how I used the die here to cut that curve. So I got the exact same shape. So that was kind of a fun discovery. So here's kind of a fun technique. It's called 3D lettering. And I used the word wishes dies for my Merry Christmas. And then um, you take a ruler and from points from the words, you make stripes and then you color in the stripes to kind of create that 3D effect. Our gems here come from the wonderful gems from the 
August to December 2020 mini catalog. I thought the Kirby Christmas stamp set and designer series paper could extend beyond the holidays, so I took a lot of the star images and I created a birthday card. Thanks again for participating in our Stampin' Class by mail, and now here's Gina with a few more things for you. Thanks for demonstrating how to make those great cards, Brenda. If you ordered a class by mail kit from either Brenda or me, make sure to follow the link in the email that shared this video with you to access the special Pinterest board that Brenda and I have curated to show you even more ways to use your quite curvy supplies. In January, it's my turn to design and share the cards with you, and I'm so excited to share a sneak peek of the three card designs using the So Much Happy Bundle from Stampin' Up's 2020-2021 Annual Catalog. From the bundle, we'll be using the So Much Happy stamp set as well as the Happy Dies. We'll also be using some brand new items from the January to June and the Celebration catalogs, including the Blackberry Bliss striped ribbon and Oso Ombre designer series paper which is actually a celebration item that you can earn for free with a $50 order starting on January 5th. We'll also be pairing these items with some embellishments from the annual catalog, including polka dot tulle ribbon, clear epoxy droplets, and rhinestone basic jewels. If you order a kit from either Brenda or me, all the items you need from the happy dies, layering circle dies, and Timeless Label Punch will be pre-punched and die cut and shipped as part of your kit. Make sure you have Blackberry Bliss, Bermuda Bay, and Memento Tuxedo Black ink pads for completing these cards. You'll also need some supply items. Stampin' Seal, Liquid Multipurpose Glue, Mini Glue Dots, Stampin' Dimensionals, Mini Stampin' Dimensionals, paper snips, a bone folder, an assortment of clear blocks, and a stamparatus. The registration deadline to guarantee your class supplies is January 5th, 2021. We also have a bonus deadline of December 27th, 2020, and if you sign up by that date, you'll get a bonus of two completed cards with envelopes shipped along with your January kit. One other thing to note, Stampin' Up! celebration period starts on January 5th, and this is a great time to order envelopes, cardstock, and any extra supplies you might need, because for every $50 you spend, you get to pick a free item from the celebration catalog. We also have a referral bonus for signing up with a new friend for the class by mail, and you can find more details about this in the emails from either Brenda or me. If you're not already on one of our email lists, please reach out to one of us so we can get you added and share more details about our classes by mail, Stampin' Up! promotions, and other exciting opportunities. Please let us know if you have any feedback about the class by mail, and until next month, happy stamping.